Hi guys, this is Lightship Planet with Top Tier Tiers, bringing you a uh, belated Summer Pocket set review. Uh, today I'm just joined by my co-host, Tim Tom, the something or other, the uh, guy who doesn't know how to make things um, right on a schedule. I don't know. It's a weird time in life for all of us here, um, and I think that we're, uh, we're all venturing into new fields, making it a bit hard to get into... Uh, things like this twice, but um, yeah, it's better late than never. This is a set that uh, I think a lot of people were excited for because this is the first key uh, visual novel set in a long time, and those sets tend to generate a lot of hype in Japan and uh, worldwide. I think a lot of people do actually like the key art style in the modern era as opposed to how it was <laughs> in the early 2000s, so I think a fair number of people were excited for it. Yeah, me lot, personally, so... I, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't really care for these things until I've actually played the visual novel. But when I play the visual novel, I, I go balls deep. Do we like even have a trans? Is there even a translation yet? Uh, no, but there is a prologue translation that someone did. Um, I am, I'm pretty excited to eventually read it because it seems like if the capo was better, basically. Anyway. Uh, before we start, it's been a while, so I think we can probably talk about our rating system. Uh, so we still haven't really refined this because we have a bunch of stuff that we've been doing and that's ultimately um, caused us to be unfortunately a bit untimely with all of this. Um, and yeah, we, we're doing letter grades like in um, like American schooling, basically. So um, we go from A to F. Where A's are like what you're what you're aiming for, the uh, the best possible grade. Uh, these are cards that are really powerful and often really unique, therefore making them good reasons to play a set. Uh, then we have uh, B cards, which are th these are basically the majority of the cards you actually want to have in your deck, realistically speaking. So you'll have cards which are because White is a game where you need cards at every level, level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3. Uh, you need plays, basically. So you want the strongest possible role players in all of these roles in the vast majority of decks. Then you've got the C grade. Uh, these are cards that you'd like... You, you're, not, you, um, you're not unhappy playing these, but you wish you had a replacement. So you've got cards that are like, you know, come and play, uh, drop a climax, salvage character. You'd rather have a Azusa effect, but... Uh, if you can't have Azza because Azza is broken, then you're happy to have a different dis ditch out. These are these are fine cards, and you shouldn't be embarrassed to play these. But of course, you should always be looking for better. Next, you've got D, which is basically where we put all the vanillas and the cards that don't really do a deal. So bad climax combos might be here, bad standby targets that you don't want to play from hand, etc., uh, and mediocre level one beaters like you know, six thousand five hundred power cards. Then you've got F. Uh, we skip E, and I still don't know why. Uh, F is basically cards that are bad. Uh, if you put them in your deck, your deck actually gets worse because you either have to warp your deck around it, or there is an actual downside to playing the card out onto the field. Or if you have it in your hand, the card is just a terrible card at all points in the game. It's very rare we'll give the F grade, but um, yeah, I mean, it's there just in case we want to give a bad grade. And we'll have meme ratings too, but you'll know exactly what we mean when we type them. Anyway, we'll go straight on to yellow, which is the first color um, that we'll cover in Summer Pockets. The first one is something buried inside the storage, Kyoko. So this is a trial deck card. It's probably the most noteworthy, one of the most noteworthy cards in the trial deck. I'm not sure how many there are, really. There's uh, this one is, other, um, two other, but they're in blue. Sure. So. Cool. Uh, so this is a 2-1 level support, giving 500 times the level of that character two cards in front. And when you come, when this comes into play, you may pay one and ditch a climax from hand. If you do, choose a climax in your waiting room, add it to hand. Uh, so this is what I regard as basically the stereotypical C, right? It's it's a card that you're you're happy to have, but if there's a more powerful support effect or a more powerful climax grabbing effect, you might play that instead. However, I think that this set really likes having access to this because its end game combo is, I mean, it's not super consistent, um, and this really does up the consistency a lot. So, yeah, yeah. this seems like a very reasonable card to have. Um, I'm probably going to give it a C plus. I'm just going to give it a C, I think. Yeah, seems reasonable. Wrong. 
All right. Next card is uh, Umi Kato, this little girl. Um, she's a common play. It gains 1,500 power for the turn. And at the start of the opponent's draw phase, so before you get to... Um, uh, before they get to do anything, you can reveal the top card of your deck, and if it's level 1 or higher, this bounces back to your hand. Um, this is a very powerful effect uh, to have on a card with a common play ability. Uh, this is one of the weaker common play abilities for sure, because it doesn't really have any utility in the late game. But as far as level, um, like turn 0 or turn 1 cards go, this is extremely good. I, I, oh, well, I, I do believe. I think it's better mm -hmm. if you have something to kill with it, but yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, but even if you don't have something to kill with it, oftentimes this is a non-interactable plus, and I think that's pretty valuable. I don't know about you. Uh, I think this is um, made a lot... But usually I don't really like these profiles, but I think uh, in a specific version of the deck that is popularly run, this deck, this card becomes a lot better because the deck is always going to have direct slots to attack into. So you can mm. continually get pluses from this card because your deck's game plan is to open up lanes for weaker cards to attack into, like this card. So I think with that yeah. in mind, you know, this card becomes a lot better. Yeah. Um... I think this card is just a very solid card. Um, it's funny that this was a common effect not too long ago, and now it's double R. Um, pretty clearly a powerful double R. Um, I think most people did recognize how powerful it was, though, when it um, when it appeared in like Saikano, for example, yeah, and was immediately looked at. It was a common, I think, right? Uh, uh, I don't remember. It's probably common. it was some. It was something Some, awful. It was like something low. It was, it was a low rarity for sure. Not not even yeah. rare, I think. Yeah, and I, I think it was actually stronger in Saikano than it is here, which is kind of funny. Um, as a common, so I'm yeah, I'm just gonna give this as yeah, straight B seems good. It's a reasonable plusing profile. It has some. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of utility in the end game, but it has more than zero because you can direct and then sometimes not have a bounce target. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, next card, uh, uh, what I can do, Shiroha. So this is a 2175 with a climax combo. Uh, but before that, it gains 500 for each other Summer Pockets character. This makes this at least 95, usually bigger, uh, which is quite sizable um, when, uh, because this is a card you can summon at level one. Spoiler. Yes. Um, this has uh, another negligible drawback if you are um, level. If you have one or fewer Summer Pockets characters, when this is reversed, this goes to Clock, which is, well, <laughs> I mean, it's barely a drawback, yeah. really. Um, and uh, the Climax combo. When this ba card's battle opponent is reversed, if you have the Wind, I believe, in your Climax zone, yes. put up to one card from the top of your deck to stock, and then choose up to one card in your waiting room and return it to your hand. Um, I think this is fantastic. It's a very powerful card, like, not it's... only does it plus by, you know, doing combo things, it pluses by being ginormous, and... Yeah. And, uh, it, most and the people... deck has the tools to make this scale into level 2, which is, like, really good. Like, usually, um, when you see these kinds of level 2 combos, level 1, uh, they're not that great, because they don't really do anything past level 1. Like, if you look at Persona 5, for example, mm -hmm. the Joker doesn't really but... do anything. Like, the level 2 part doesn't, like, lead to any bigger returns. But here, the deck has the tools to make this a really, really good card all the way into level 3. Which is why I think this is, like, a mm -hmm. easily, like, yeah, meta-defining that... card if this if this set is in your locals. Or, or yeah, I think your... that uh, this is one of the reasons to play the set, really. Um, because it's so big. Um, even if you don't manage to get the reverse, like, if your opponent is, like, playing attack on titan or i mean whatever uh or if they god forbid somehow counter over it uh which i sincerely doubt um you know what let's scratch the second bit because that basically never happens with this deck yeah um if you if you somehow fail to reverse because the opponent you know has runners or they have some sort of way to avoid 
you're still really massive and it's going to be very, very difficult for anyone to deal with this because not only is it immune to level one bombs immune to cost zero bombs um yeah and it gets advantage back and then it gets advantage by staying on field so while i'm usually hesitant to give on reverse combos a good score this one is more than just an on reverse combo it's a field-based advantage engine and yeah it's <laughs> it's reminiscent of the decks of old except you add on powerful effects onto the top yeah um, uh, it's we'll... also like there's it's really important to note that there's like very little conventional answers to a card like this once it's on the yeah. board at level one i think the only thing i could think of is just like a, a dachi and like on command bounce which aren't well, there's really? like the Shinchan, Gochusa, and Misa oh, counters. That's right. But like <laughs> those are those are basically <laughs> Those are not basically yeah, so uncommon. Uh you might want yeah. you might be afraid of the Gochusa counter depending on the deck you're playing against, but like even if you cuz so that card's also a sack counter, I think, which is pretty Yeah, okay, sure. So one one just, bad but level just, one that's just like one deck, yeah. <laughs> like a billion. Yeah. Um the other thing that is like kind of problematic i guess is um ways to bounce but those are also either yeah. basically not present or uh luck based so yep. uh in mirrors of this set i've seen games be decided by um really <laughs> lucky bouncers it's like it's and when like i say decided i mean like they just get else. they just get like a three or four damage advantage and that's usually enough to snowball because um that's what this deck does best snowball um, because from there you get your direct attack, um, your opponent tries to attack you back after paying one stock and you get to counter, and then it just it gets really dumb from there. So uh, this is a very popular deck in Japan because of this card, uh, because of the security this card provides. Noises, yeah. sorry. Sorry. Basically, the security that card provides is uh, very highly rated by a lot of players. It's, it's, it's the same thing you see with Hinologi and decks like that. It's not unbeatable, but it's certainly extremely powerful. And if you let it get out of control, it really will get out of control. And it's even a selective plus, like, well, pseudo selective, but you have, you certainly have ways to mill fast. Yeah, A is probably fine. All right, next card, uh, Summer Pocket, Shiroha. Uh, so when this attacks, you give enough, um, you give one of your characters 1,500, so you can give it to itself. And up to once a turn, when this is placed from hand to stage, when damage dealt by this is cancelled, mill one, and deal X damage where X is one plus the level of the card milled. So this is your typical Musashi. Um, it has a little bit of extra, um, what you call it, a little bit of extra utility in that you can give things 1,500 power. It's not completely irrelevant because one of the favored level three combos does a lot of stuff with restanding and things so this is not this is not terrible but i uh i think they're just better I, I, to I, exactly uh it's very difficult to fit more than a couple of this in if at all simply because it's not super powerful it doesn't can trip and your finishing power is already quite reasonable you even so. have like um one off, like uh off climax finishers that are better than this card i think so yeah, yeah so true. i think this is a fine card to have access to but um especially if you don't want to play other colors but um it's it's just that a fine card to have access to it's nothing that you would definitely slot in your deck before anything else agreed um okay next card um eating together umi this is a zero zero five hundred during your turn the front middle slot of your field gains 1000 power and one cost self tap brainstorm and for every climax you reveal in the top four draw two ditch one um i'm not huge on this card um i think you just don't need it really I'm um, pretty sure there's a better brainstorm. I feel like I've seen yes, a better brainstorm. There is a, there is a brainstorm that has a better alternate effect, and yes. it's also a tap self plus some brainstorm. Yes. Plus, this is not selective, and this deck definitely wants selectivity, both at the quote unquote mid game at your level one and at the end game at level three. Now you can compensate a little bit with um uh with lucky standby triggers but that's really not consistent yeah. um 
That being said, this is still a brainstorm, and you can't really give it an awful grade, but I think this one only gets a C, because there's really no reason to play this, because you have fine yellow fixing elsewhere as well. Yeah, I, I, just, I just don't, I, I, I don't value this super highly. Like, yeah, you can draw your climax sometimes, but, I mean, that's, that's not a super powerful um, argument to make. Especially when you don't just need your climax, you need a bunch of other stuff as well. That's fair enough. All right. So next card is uh, the Colors of the Wings of the Future. That's a really awkward name, uh, Shiraha. Uh, when when this is reversed in battle, uh, you may ditch a time trait character from your hand to the waiting room and send this to memory. So uh, time is basically this card, right? Uh, I think it's Shiraha, Umi, and um, the little girl, right? Yeah, Umi. Yep. So, um, <clears throat> th this is basically for the theme deck, but there's no reason you can't also try to put this into, um, a regular build. Uh, sorry, I should finish saying it. Um, if you have another time trait character on your field and there are two or fewer cards in memory, you may pay the cost. If you do, salvage a time trait character. So this is basically a hand filter that gets you memory. Yeah. This would be all well and good if there weren't better ways to get memory, and there are several better ways to get memory. Mm -hmm. And you don't need and the as yellow result, fixing either. Yeah, you don't need yellow fixing. There are better ways to get yellow fixing. As a result, this is basically a waifu card, um, I think. Um, so I'm not a big fan of it. It's serviceable in the waifu deck, but even there, it's not particularly powerful, especially if you just want memory. And well, if you just want memory, you can have this just go to memory. Then ditch a time character, salvage the same time character, and it's. I mean. I also really don't like how non selected this is at level zero. Um, yeah. It's just very. Restricted. I mean, this is kind of like a really mediocre um, swimsuit Charles, right? Uh. Yeah. I, mean, I wouldn't really want to run that card either, so. Yeah, I, I don't think swimsuit Charles <laughs> is very good. Um. I mean, it's a fine card in specifically yeah. Sedokai, but it's it's definitely overrated by like how, most just like how this card is like fine in the waifu deck or whatever. Yep. All right, next card is uh, Hinge Ceremony. Uh, Shiroha, Hinge, Hinge, is it hinge? Ceremony. Is it Hinge? I I actually don't know. I'm pretty sure it's Hinge because that's all kanji as opposed to anything okay. that you would translate as Hinge. Uh, 103k. When this comes to play, draw one, ditch one, which is you know, a powerful effect for a climax combo oriented card. And when you play the wind for the 2 1, you may sack this. If you do, choose up to one 2 1 Shiroha in your hand, put it in this card slot. So this, this is, is how you get it out on level, get it out before yes. level one. Um, so this is why the, the two ones so powerful, because you get out level one. Now, granted, it's a lot, a lot, a lot mm -hmm. harder, because you need five cards to have, you know, two rows of combo, as opposed to, say, um, any Maguro-type combo needs four cards, um, for a triple field. And, uh, yeah, but the thing is, the payoff, I think, is worth it. If you get the chance to start dominating two lanes early on, then I think that's worth the amount of hand that you drop. Because especially because if your opponent has, say, tri-fielded, you immediately re recoup that hand. Yeah. So for me, this is um, inextricably linked to the two-one double R, and as a result, gets the same grade as that one. It's even. It's really nice because this card even this doesn't draw lose. Ditches. Yeah, draw the draw, draw ditch on play is really huge actually yeah, if yeah. this were just so, um, the climax combo it would be so much worse but because it has the yeah. draw ditch it maintains like a utility in the deck far beyond the climax combo turn which i think is yes. really good and it's also still just a beta which is totally fine um well <laughs> it's 3k power it's fine so, well uh, uh yeah it's okay it's fine right but... it beats in it's a it's basically a zero zero draw ditch and that's a card that several series yes. are happy to play uh, it and, should be noted yeah. though, if you whiff this combo level one, you just kind of like. Yeah, you kind of just uh, do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the set, the set basically does nothing if it whiffs the level one combo, but if it gets the level one combo, it's super powerful. Yes. So this is definitely worth it. All right. Uh, next card is Umikata. Oh, no, this is not, not Umikata. This is. This not is... Umikata. Uh, this is another Shiroha. Yes. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stage, if you have another Summer Pockets character, so. 
basically everything. This gains 2k for the turn, and when this attacks, give a character 1k for the turn. So, um, I don't know why this is a rare. Like, it, it honestly confused me. This attacks as a 7k, but then is reversed by literally everything. And it doesn't even go to memory or anything, so... This is just a bland, uninteresting beta that I really don't think has a role in any deck. Um, I really think you can do better, and there's already pretty fierce competition for your level 1 slots. So I'm uh, I'm not a fan. Not me either. Just doesn't do anything. Yeah, it just does not do anything particularly noteworthy. Alright, next card. Um, place for each other, Shiroha. When this attacks, if you have two or more Summer Pockets characters, look up two cards from the top of your deck, add one, put it on top, and then put the rest in your waiting room. And pay one when it attacks, you may pay cost. If you do, trigger check twice. So, what this card effectively does is it gives you three chances um, to uh, trigger standby. find standby. Yeah. Yep. Or trigger a win. So, you know, I've had a turn. This card has triggered both standby and win for me before. Yeah. It's really funny. It's really good when, when you it can... happens. But, uh... <laughs> I think this card is the sort... Like, this is a powerful filler card, I think. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, it contrasts I... with the previous card by just doing a yeah. lot more for you, I think. This Pretty even much, works really despite... well with a 2 1 combo because you can pay out the blind stock immediately. Yes, and the other thing about that is that, well, it's a bit awkward, right? Because if you do the 2 1 combo and then you, um, uh, you immediately trigger standby, I mean, you the, ideally you get another 2 1 into back row or whatever, but there's not really a great thing you can do with it like you can't really sack this unless you want to uh, lose damage which I, I i mean that's not an awful awful strategy but i certainly wouldn't call it a good strategy so this card does a lot but i think it's a little awkward at times because uh the most common times you'll be playing this are as the third row in your um in your level one field this is very good as the third row if you only um if you only have one of the combo, but it's a lot less good if you have two of the combo. Uh, that being said, it is very worth playing at least a couple because um, figuring out exactly what your next trigger is and being able to stack into standbys earlier in the game is certainly a powerful effect. So, um, like, this is one of the few times I'm going to endorse standby because one, the standby is not your main plan at level zero to two or whatever. And two, you have ways to make it a lot more consistent. So I'm, uh, I actually think this is powerful enough to give it a higher score than what you've got. But that's, I mean, whatever. It's like it's pretty just much hard. The, same score. Uh, the deck doesn't. It's hard to find the room for this card. I think for a lot of people, because mm -hmm. you essentially have eight slots committed to your combo, basically, which is a weakness yep. of that win the combo. For sure. Yep. Okay, the next card is uh, Shiroha Naruto. It's a 2-1 anti-change bomb, uh, stock bomb. It has a climax combo, so when you play the shot to the climax zone, if this is in the front row, you can bounce a different character from hand to stage. If you do, choose up to one time trait character in your hand, whose level is equal to or lower than your level, put in any slot on stage, this gains 3k for the turn. So the, look, for the Shiroha waifu deck, the immediate obvious combo is to uh, play the one zero that combos, draw a drop, and then bounce that card and play whatever the hell you want into that slot. <laughs> so you can like you can skip out on stock by doing this. Um, you, you can, can play you know, in early play, play too. Level. I think with this. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, you well. If you meet yeah, the condition, you can. it's it's stock because um yeah because yes uh you can also um play the uh you can play uh, Dashi and get the effect because it's placed from hand to stage. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you can do a bunch of stuff with this, but unfortunately, it's just not high impact enough. It's way more cute than it actually is good. This is playable just as a stock bomb, uh, but in the waifu deck, you can do some cute stuff, especially since the main Shiroha finisher is, well, she's a Musashi, so it's climaxless. Um, yeah, no, this is, I'm evaluating this purely on the basis of being a stock bomb. 
the climax combo is an entirely waifu deck thing, and it's really not relevant. Yep. Oh, and it gets this card also gets three K for turn, which is mm. not particularly relevant. It'd be interesting if the uh, other card got three K power. Mm hmm. Okay, the next card. This is definitely not Yumi Kato. This is whatever, Oops. whatever main character's name is. Hi, if you have, yeah, the color of the wings of the future Shiroha, which is the zero zero Shiroha that goes to memory, you have to, and when it's reversed, you ditch, and then you are, uh, you can salvage a time trait character. This card's time trait too, isn't it? Wait, is it? Uh, yes. It's not, is it? Is it? I'm oh, pretty it, sure is. it is. Okay. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, when you do that, uh. It gains 2,500 power to become a 1065 and resonance to reveal that same card in your hand. If you do, it gains one soul for the turn. Uh, I'm not a fan of playing bad cards or like mediocre cards to make uh, bad cards mediocre. And despite being a two soul costless beta, needing to run presumably four of this other card because you need it both in memory and in hand. Uh, albeit it's not too hard to have one in hand after sending one to memory because of how the effect works, but I'm still not going to give this high grade because it's just not particularly special. It's a 1062 soul beater. There are much stronger things you can be doing with your level 1 turns. Yeah. Alright, next place. A pocket-like place. Kyoko, when this is placed from hand to stage, you may ditch a card. If you do, choose a summer pocket in your memory. Return it to hand. This gains 1k for the turn. Um, so Summer Pockets is a series of events, um, I forget I exactly what they do. Uh, no, it's on. only, there's only one version of it. Alright, sure. It's basically um, the, um, it's like a costed it tornado. Millful? It's, you know the Subaru oh, sure. event? Yeah, it's the Subaru event, I think. It's like, okay, basically sure. that. Sure, so when this attacks, you may pay one. If you do, choose up to one Summer Pockets in Waiting Room, send it to memory. This gains 500 power for the turn. So this is a cute little recurring engine that would be really, really powerful if Weiss was a grindy game where you could block damage. Sadly, Weiss is not a grindy game where you can block damage, and as a result, this is way too slow to have any real impact. It makes you run this event that is, despite being the titular card of the set, is not particularly impactful, and doesn't actually, like, plus you in any significant way. Despite there being a, like, a ditch pseudo bond and a on attack pay one to do thing, there is no plus involved in this card. Plus, it's like very weak. Um, and the card you get is surface. costed as well. So. Yeah, so um, I'm not a fan. It's inefficient. And despite being a powerful grind engine, the, you know, this in other games when you grind... grind what makes this a powerful grind Well, engine? the thing is, in other games, powerful grind engines get you card advantage, they get you resources. This doesn't give this you any you either. Resources. No, it doesn't. It doesn't give you either. What would you... It gives you a resource that isn't valuable. It gives you milling power. Uh, and there are way better ways to be getting that. Sure, but it doesn't. It's not even a sustainable. Uh, yeah. Engine. So. Definitely. Yeah. Just... So to to um to the grind lovers, uh, who might be listening, this might look like a powerful card, but in reality, just doesn't really do anything. Uh, next card, a two. Sorry. Were you calling someone out with that? No, no, I wasn't. Uh, Although, if someone feels grind. attacked by that, then then that is uh, uh, an unintended happy side effect of what I just did. <laughs> next card, two one anti change counter. Um, when you use this card's backup, you may pay to sack a character from stage. If you do, choose one of your opponent's characters with a level higher than their level and put it in stock. So they go plus stock, which is not I really good. hate these versions of the anti change counter. Yeah. Um like the clanid one is okay because it, it's a level one counter, so you can do cute stuff against like Joker and stuff. But um here it's not particularly good. Like uh <laughs> this does have some use against like Hinologi, but yeah. that's that's a deck which leans so absurdly hard Even on its then, advance. I feel like, man, you get so much. I, I'd like to just note that I think you just get way more value out of bluffing this card than actually having it in your deck. Because uh, the opportunity cost of this card is just really high, I think. Because the effect is just really bad. The cost is really. Like, the effect for the cost is really bad. And, like, 
it's it's like a very specific you have to like sacrifice hand sculpting to get this into your hand usually yeah um i think literally the strongest um the strongest thing you can do with this card is have a single one in your deck and then mill it with like the Azusa effect yeah. and then as soon as it mills sigh extremely loudly and say ah, well there goes my there goes one of my anti-change counters I really hope I draw the next one. And then hopefully your opponent is new and intimidated by you and now plays around that and you change counter for the rest of it. Something like that, yeah. They side you with their Yukos or something. Which is, which would be funny because your field is usually going to be level 2. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to give this a C. Um, damn. Um... Yeah, I'm giving it C minus because it is one of the weaker anti change effects. Yeah. Like if it bottom decked, or I mean, who cares about color wheel, right? If yeah, it bottom decked, yeah. or if it like bounced the hand and then discard a card. That are regular, like sack counters. No, I don't think no? so. Okay. Well. I can't think of one. The Shinchan counter is red. Feels bad. Hmm. Huh. You really should just. Rip, like kick out the top card of stock. I don't know why they balanced it like that. Especially considering the bottom deck counters don't really do any like. They don't. They don't have any additional yeah. detriment. Maybe yeah. they have like one k less power. Who knows? Anyway, uh, next card, uh, alone, uh, with uh, Shiroha. It is a three-two for the Wifey deck. For each of your other Summer Pockets characters, this gains 500 power, and when you play this from hand to stage, you may heal one. Uh, did, did you know that in 2014, this was a doubler, and I had four of the signed version it's in Miku? It's still an uncommon. Yeah, uncommon is better than nothing. Um... Waifu deck card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, better than nothing. Um... All right, next card. Good uh, enough. Good enough. Umi. Um, <laughs> uh, is this good enough? Mm, this is really cute because of how the art works out to look like. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I um, uh, I think it is really cute. I don't think it's particularly good. So during your opponent's turn, if this is in the back row left slot, and you have the next card, all your characters gain 1k. So, you know, blue effects, because reasons. And you can tap this to give a character 500 for the turn. Um, yeah, no, this is not good. Uh, next card. Um, <laughs> during your turn, if you're just in the back row, and you have another um, card we just talked about, all your characters gain 1k. So basically, this is these power. two together. Well, no, 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 no. Sorry, no. Okay, never mind. One it's just, it's just one. Global it's a global one k. k it's a global one k. It's a global yep. one k. Sick. Yep. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is um... not, not have any other kinds of cards in your back row. You know, this was good um, in Railgun. The concept, not 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 the uh, the concept. I mean, the concept of sacrificing back row slots for cards that don't do anything except give power to your cards. Like back in like however long ago that was. Now it's just common fodder. Sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. Uh, that card was one K standalone, so you could also do other stuff with your back row. And you could stack it so it would be 2k at all times. So I don't think that's a good comparison. You are talking about the um Mogu Mogu Hyrule, yes, right? Yeah, I, I'm just yeah, I'm not talking. I'm not saying the specific like the, the specifics specifics are whatever. Right? The details are irrelevant. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I, I I'm just saying the, comparison... the concept, the concept of like the opportunity cost of like having nothing else in your back row uh, was a lot lower back then, right? Because I mean, I'm... sure, but the comparison's different because that's also 2k total and this requires two specific sure, cards but even i'm just saying yeah. like even now you wouldn't it's even now it's just like, that kind of thing isn't good enough so like this definitely this i mean can't be good enough this isn't completely unplayable like it does make your um two one like your two ones are good enough that giving them extra power can often uh close games i just don't think this is how you want to do it yeah 
I mean, right. you have a much better way to give power at level 2, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next card is um, Fava, Fava, Hairi, I'm assuming, in relation to no, the little girl. No, you skipped card, didn't you? Did I? Oh, yeah, yes, I did. did. This, this card is really nice art. Um, zero zero one one k lost in the summer. Umi and Shira. When this attacks, if you have uh, precious time in the climax zone, you, uh, which is the shot, I think. Yes. You may pay one. If you do, uh, salvage a summer pockets character. So, uh, at level zero, this is really bad. But let's keep going. At the end of this card's attack, if precious time is in the climax zone, there are two or fewer cards in memory. Send this to memory. So, this. Uh, it, I mean, it has one more effect. Let's go on. Um, when this is reversed, uh, it stock bomb your level zero opponent. So this actually has a bunch of really reasonable effects. The issue is that you have to play a climax combo to get any of them. Like for example, if this had um, say this comboed with um, uh, the wind that that works mm, with the two one the one zero. That would be cool. Yeah, this card would be playable, I think. Yes. Um, it would be. Uh, it wouldn't be like a four of. It would be like a one of, or a two of, but it would certainly be playable yeah. because sometimes you'll have those games where this just goes to memory and um, that turns on a bunch of your other cards. And I mean, sometimes uh, you'd have those games where you just don't get the two one on the board, right? Um, yeah. Well, I, this is also an advantage engine, right? Yeah. So that's actually really reasonable. Um, uh, okay. Unfortunately, reality does not match. Uh, Never that lucky. Yeah. Right. Okay, so now we can actually go to the next card, which is Fava Hairi. It's a 103k. Gives all characters in front 500 power, and when you trigger a climax, give a character 2k for the turn. So the idea is to combo with um that uh the one zero that triggers a bunch that can um trigger twice and also uh top check two. And as a result, this card is better than it initially seems. But it's still nothing particularly special, I think. Yeah. Yeah, so, um... I am not overly impressed with, um, this card. I also but don't think the power is. matters it's, it's, that it's much. Right? Because... Yeah, I, I, mean, like, I, I when, don't think it matters you, very yeah, much. When are your two ones gonna, like... You're gonna have mirror. to be, like, some kind of... Yeah, in the mirror, but, like... You're not playing this Man, that is a weird. Mirror. That That is a weird meta right there. <laughs> where you're I expecting agree. a summer I mean, pockets mirror like japan would often like japan could true. get to that's the point true. where that you know, is true it, it, we might see weird weird stuff from japan's summer pockets list because they're expecting yeah. a mirror maybe but yeah 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 it's um like japan tends to get pretty inbred pretty fast i don't think summer pockets is on the level of say nisekoi um oh, or sunshine, sunshine yeah, or yeah. or rewrite where you start warping your deck just <laughs> to fight that but um uh i mean it, it they have a low threshold for that as well like they warp their decks to uh fight hinologi and stuff no they might also just have like they might be more sensitive to like there might be regional stuff we don't know about so yeah i agree but, but yeah definitely the previous right. card is just hard medical yeah i think yes i do think that this card is uh low um well i'm talking about the support is uh is low uh opportunity cost enough that playing one or two is not actually a big problem, yeah. especially because this is a set with Nazza. But uh, I mean, it's uh, it, you could certainly do better things with your stock. Next card's a vanilla, it doesn't do anything. Although I would still play, I would probably consider playing this over the the one zero that gets power and then attacks the seven k, which is really depressing when I think of it like that. But hey. Um. Next, we've got um Kobato Naruse. Uh, it's her dad, I think. Or her grandfather? Probably. This is like a waifu deck card. That's not the waifu, so I don't see any time you would ever play this. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, just I. It's a standby target. <laughs> no, it is not. You know, your brainstorm the Shiroha. You know, it could be sick. His hand on the uh, board. I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you keep on dreaming there. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's dreaming or memeing. Uh, it's one of those two. Maybe both. All right. Next card is this is uh the magical picture diary. Ah yes, the uh 
you can't have a key visual novel without some instance of incredibly shitty art somewhere. <laughs> and this is actually, as far as shitty art goes, pretty good. Uh, one zero, not a counter. Choose one of your summer pockets characters. That character gains 5,500 power and hexproof for the turn. Um, look, Talking I'm always... Really, really specific medicals here. From a, um, from a game design perspective, um, I like that cards like this exist because I, I like it when, um, when traps exist, basically, um, to make people think that power is super important. <laughs> um, of course, that, that's uh, only because the more informed players will see a card like this and kind of, you know, roll their eyes because why, right? Yeah. If your meta is all uh, little busters, not even then, honestly. No, no. This if your meta is like, all summer so... pockets, this is the summer pockets mirror breaker, dude. Jesus Christ! I... So you the, think I'm joking? The but problem this is with this card can be it's just like better. no way, no bonds, no way to get it. So you have to run multiples of it, and then you're running multiples of this useless card that doesn't do anything, except for in very, very well, specific situations. Let's be real, right? So. You know those really bad characters in fighting games who have like death combos whenever they do manage to okay, land. But like, and then those, okay, but like those—that's not even a fair comparison. Because in the right, like you actually have examples where people take those characters to like unforeseen heights. There is no, there is nothing for this card. I think that if you ever reverse shit, like, um. Uh, Jeez. Um, if you ever reverse, <laughs> like a um, God, like the reward uh, has to voice. be so high for reversing, like a character, right? For this to be, bro, you know what this is good for? This is good for the Gochu Samir. Wow, counter their counter. Hmm. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Yeah. Are we still talking about the magical picture diary, or have we moved on? Um, I zoned out for a moment because I got a, uh, I, I got a text I had to respond I to. See. Anyway, um, next card, Summer Pockets. It's the one one event. Uh, mill three. Choose a level X or lower Summer Pockets character. Um, in your waiting room. Uh, God, this is this is not a good time. Uh, and return to hand with X number of summer pockets characters you milled. Um, choose a character, and that character gains 2k power for the turn, and then send this to memory. Um, yeah, no, not particularly, not particularly special. Uh, again, this is part of that little, um, this is part of that little, whatchamacallit? Engine? Yes. Yes. Uh, if this were a regular Operation Tornado... I would be more. I'd be way more kind to the other card, but as it is, mm. just, it uh, is not though because yeah. that that yeah. digit in the corner is a big yes. big deal. Yeah, there are some other cards that play around this card, but to be honest, none of them are good enough to justify running this card. Mm -hmm. I think this card, like man, being costed. I agree. Entirely. Being costed makes this effect so much worse. Yeah, it goes from being a uh, free mill, which is very, uh, like, a big deal, because you can hit a critical mass by stacking I mean, it's them. it's free mill and hand fix, right? So it's like, it's basically, it's kind of like an Azusa in that regards. Um, yeah, kind of. But, um, it's, it's not like that anymore. Yeah. It's like a costed, it's, it's almost like a costed Azusa, basically. Which is, uh, <laughs> which historically is never been very good, yeah. Well, it's just not been played. The, um, Discare version turns no heads, and the... I mean, the Gargantua yeah, version. Good. Yeah, they're just well, good cards. Gargantua because Gargantua's not good. The oh, Disgay one because yeah. it just was not a card you really wanted to play. Alright. Um, is that the end of Yellow? Nope. One more card. There's one, one more card. card. One more card. Uh, this last card, 2-2 two, two event. The last summer vacation. Oh, this looks sad. If you have a character of Shirohara name and a character of Hyrie name, draw up to one card, put up to one card from top of your clock in waiting room and send it to memory. So... This is kind of like a a very discounted heal because 
heels normally cost anywhere from you know one to three stock depending on where the card goes this is a this does not lose you a card and it does get you a heal so this is fairly costed the problem is this effect is so low impact that i can't possibly justify giving this a good grade i mean just run a um, not only instead, that right yeah it's just run a healer and then you have a beta which is often worth more than a card because it progresses your game state yes Okay, and that brings us to the end of yellow. We'll be back soon with probably green. Yep, see ya.